Welcome to Iron Rain's Decode Robot Parts in Two Days. Robot in Two Days is how Iron Rain better understands the new season's game by starting to prototype a robot right after the game reveal. We start by sharing our first impressions and strategies. This year, we couldn't devote our full press efforts like normal, but we still discovered some shareable experiments and observations. We noticed the defensive potential right away. Those neutral launch zones are going to be contested territory, and with balls naturally flowing to the opposite alliances, side loading zones, strategy becomes super important. The motif scoring really caught our attention too because it's not about the sets of three, it's about individual ball positioning in the classifier ramp. But here's the thing that stood out. Every motif has two purples and one green, so simple math tells you to focus on scoring purple balls for a two periods advantage if you do not have motif scoring capabilities. Our very first idea for scoring the artifacts was to have two counter-rotating wheels that would shoot the ball, but our first efforts didn't give the ball enough height or distance. We know that's solvable, but this approach is inherently less predictable or consistent due to an extremely short contact interval and the chance of encountering a wiffle hole on one side or the other. Our second thought was a flywheel design where the artifact would get swept up and shot by a rotating wheel. The ball would be guided by curved rails that would allow the ball to leave at a 45 degree angle. We were able to use a foam filled tire with aggressive tread that would make for a good initial flywheel because it provides a good grip on the ball. We only had to change one thing on the wheel system, which was the gear ratio on the motor. We used prototyping sheets of MDF to make a circular board that would let us prototype the launcher geometry. We cut it so that the ball would leave at around 45 degrees. Since we did not have a big enough compass to create the correct size curve, we made our own using a nail, a string, and a pencil. When we first tried it, we realized the gear ratio was too high, so we changed it from the pre-existing 12 to 1 to a 5 to 1 ratio. However, the wheel was still moving too slow because the sprocket system also had its own gear ratio built in, so we reduced the gear ratio even further to a 1 to 1. This gave us a better RPM, but to actually get the correct distance and height, we would need to build our own custom flywheel. Overnight, we quickly catted and 3D printed a preliminary flywheel that would contact the ball from two opposing sides. Our main problem was figuring out the correct spacing between the two sides of the wheel, as having a contact area that was too wide would result in most of the flywheel's rotational speed being converted into ball spin rather than forward velocity. To fix this, we would need to contact the ball closer to its center and just use the outer edges as guide rails to keep it straight. But the overnight flywheel design couldn't be narrowed that much and didn't have enough friction on the edge where ball contact now happened. So now the launch was very weak. In order to fix this, we slid some surgical tubing and wrapped it around the edges of the flywheel. This design resulted in launches with enough ball height and more than enough distance, but only some of the time. Often, the ball would shoot out off to the side or not have enough height. When we recorded the flywheel in slow motion, we realized that the surgical tubing was expanding outwards due to the high speed rotations. Aside from fixing these issues, we also needed to create a more rigid testing structure and have more careful control of the initial point of contact. We quickly prototyped a small lifting mechanism so the ball would not be instantaneously shot as it came into contact with the subsystem, but we did not get around to putting all these parts onto an actual chassis. We also played with a limelight camera to confirm that the randomization April tag on the obelisk can be recognized from both starting positions in reasonable lighting. The goal April tags can be seen from the launch zones. We learned a tremendous amount from our initial prototyping and it gave us a good baseline to start ideating more ideas. We'll continue to share updates on our blog and Instagram. Thanks for watching and good luck to all the teams this season.